What is going on everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for another video. Of course, it's a Tuesday. Your boy don't slack on uploading videos every single day. So today we got a new video. But before we get into that, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to inform you that tomorrow the upload may be late because I have a job interview. And what is that job interview, ladies and gentlemen? That is a board operator at a local radio station, as well as the potential to do some play-by-play -play commentary for high school sports, ladies and gentlemen. And that is exciting, and I literally could not have done it without you guys. Like, I could not have owned my skills as a broadcaster or as, you know, a sports personality, which I'm trying to do, without you guys. Literally, my live reactions, doing commentary for that, like, that prepared me for my future and to help me really get this job and to solidify it, you know, and to really perfect my skills as far as that goes. And now, I'm getting a job offer to do just that, ladies and gentlemen. And again, again, I couldn't have done it without you guys, without your help, without you guys supporting the channel. And again, if you guys are new to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button because we put out Jaguar content six days a week. We are working harder than anybody in this motherfucker. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for helping me uh, get this job because I, I don't think I would have been able to do it without you guys. So, again, I am very happy and very grateful for you guys. But, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the video at hand. The video at hand is we are going to be ranking every Jaguar position group from worst to best post-free agency. And, you know, after we've let some guys go and we have signed some guys... This order may surprise you, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is ranking every position group from the Jaguars from worst to best post-free agency. Number eight, tight ends. Whoo boy, ladies and gentlemen. If the Jags do not draft a tight end this year's draft at any point, this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> Nick Foles is not going to have a true tight end to throw to. You know, you got Jeff Swaim starting. You got Ben Koyak. And you got James O'Shaughnessy. This is just not the tight end group that you want heading into a season in the NFL. You don't want Ben Koyak, James O'Shaughnessy, and Jeff Swaim to be your tight ends. And I fully expect the Jaguars to make a play at a tight end, whether that be in the first or the second round, getting a Hawkinson or maybe like an Irv Smith Jr. in the second round or a Dawson Knox as well in the second round. Uh, the Jags are going to have to do that because this is the worst position group that the Jaguars have heading into the 2019 season by far. You know, there's not... There's not one star to be had uh, in this tight end room right now. And they really need to bring in a young, exciting rookie so he can be uh, Nick Foles' go-to guy. You know, he really succeeded with guys like Zach Ertz uh, in Philadelphia. He was a really reliable guy for Nick Foles. So the Jags are going to have to try and bring in a tight end to be that guy for Nick Foles. Because if they don't, then they have just three average to below average tight ends that are just not going to get the job done and won't be involved in the offense at all. So the Jags are going to have to, have to try and get a tight end in the draft. Number seven, quarterbacks. Now the Jags did break the bank to get their newest franchise quarterback, Nick Foles, and that does kind of boost up the clout just a little bit, but I think the quarterback position remains the least deep position group for the Jacksonville Jaguars as it was last year though they got a reliable starter in Nick Foles the quarterbacks behind him are not reliable to come in and help the Jaguars win a game unless it's against the Indianapolis Colts and then in which case Cody Kessler could come in and win the game by six points but in any other game Cody Kessler will struggle, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do, I'd what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the Jaguars try and bring in a rookie quarterback of some talent caliber. Uh, I have been doing some recent mock drafts where the Jags get them in the seventh round like an Easton stick, and I don't think that necessarily would improve the quarterback's ranking on this list if the Jags brought in a guy like that, but if the Jags bring in, you know, kind of a project guy like maybe a Daniel Jones or maybe a Will Greer, I think that that will boost the depth of the quarterback position up significantly and will definitely rise the quarterbacks overall uh, on the list of uh, deepest position groups for the Jaguars heading into the uh, 2019 season. But as of right now, the Jags are with Cody Kessler, Tanner Lee, and just two other quarterbacks I ain't never heard of, and I didn't even know the Jags signed. So, and I think that they're talking to Brandon Silvers, who is a former AAF quarterback, LOL for the Memphis Express. 
And, uh, you know, if he comes in, that, again, doesn't really help the quarterback position as far as depth goes and as a position group as a whole. So, unfortunately, though Nick Foles was the biggest signing in free agency, the quarterbacks remain the least deep position group that the Jaguars have. Number six, running backs. The Jaguars have tried their best to get a lot of insurance policy at the running back position if Leonard Fournette goes down. I'm just not too high or too hot on the guys that the Jaguars did sign in case of this situation. I don't like the Thomas Rawls move too much. I don't like the Alfred Blue move too much. I don't even really like the Benny Cunningham move too much. You're bringing in three completely new running backs, and you release two running backs... That would improve this position group, and it would have been ranked higher if we maintained TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant, which both of them are still free agents, which is just crazy. So, And you know the Jags aren't going to bring them back, especially after the signing of Cunningham, Blue, and uh, Rawls. So, you know, the Jags aren't going to be bringing them back, but I think this is a group as a whole that got worse. I think TJ Yeldon and Corey Grant fit the scheme that the Jags were trying to run tremendously, even though the Jags don't think that, which I think is just completely completely ridiculous but you know it could be a whole new offensive scheme and maybe these guys are going to fit the scheme that John Day Phil Lupo is going to be running and maybe I could be eating my words and saying oh all these running backs are actually really good for this scheme but as of right now I am not too high on it uh the Jags might be drafting a running back in the later rounds, so maybe that'll help boost them up a little bit but as of right now I don't see them moving anywhere uh on this list unless Unless uh, the Jags go out and get like a premier running back in a trade or something like that to back up Leonard Fournette. But as of right now, I think the running backs are pretty safe at the bottom of the list as far as the deepest uh, position group for the Jaguars post-free agency. And I think that's fair. But again, I will come back and eat my words if one of these running backs do go off and have proved to be a really good running back in the system of John Day Filippo. As of right now, though, I am not too hot are not too high on the uh, running backs that are currently in the Jaguars running back room. Coming in at number five, we have the linebackers. Now, I think the linebackers did get better in a sense that they brought in a guy like Jake Ryan, who I think will solidify his spot and be a solid, solid linebacker and a solid piece to this Jaguars uh, linebacker community. Of course, you got Telvin Smith and Miles Jack Telvin, who has now been doing this for a long, long time, and hopefully he goes back to his old form where he is just a tremendous linebacker, a all-pro caliber player. He doesn't go back to his 2018 form where he struggled, struggled, struggled. Same with Miles Jack. I don't think necessarily Miles Jack had a bad season last year in fact I think he had a pretty good season it's just the scheme and the defense that he was in wasn't necessarily the answer for the Jaguars uh, at the time but bringing in a Jake Ryan and you know you got Telvin Smith Miles Jack you know those three are your studs and I think they improved I really do I don't think that they are the best uh, position group that the Jaguars have uh, because of the performance from those two men last season. I think Telvin Smith's performance kind of dragged him down a little bit in this here rankings, and it's kind of like just the starters are solid. There's not a lot of depth. I mean, of course, you got the uh, the people that have been here for a while, like uh, Reynolds, you know, he's been here for a while, and you know, those guys are true special teamers, and they're going to help the special teams, but as far as linebacker depth to come in and play for the Jags, I don't necessarily have a lot of faith. You got guys like Leon Jacobs, who I think uh, if he comes off the bench now and he's not really thrusted into the starting lineup, I think he could uh, improve and show his potential, uh, do an in limited reps instead of you know coming onto the field a lot more than what he's ready for. And then you got Blair Brown as well. Uh, he's been kind of reliable and you know th there's some linebackers on this team that aren't starters that have potential to be good players and you know I think Blair Brown's one of those guys same with Leon Jacobs uh so you know I think this is a group that could surprise you next season and I think it's a group that uh improved with the addition of Jake Ryan even though he's coming off of an ACL tear I think that uh Guys that usually get released after big injuries tend to go off and tend to play better in the season after their season-ending injury if they go to a new team. I mean, you just look at guys like Allen Robinson, who performed well on Chicago Bears, and I'm hoping Jake Ryan could add himself onto that list of guys that came in and played solid after an ACL injury for a new team, and I think that he's going to help out this Jaguars defense a ton and this whole linebacking group as a whole. 
Coming in at number four, I have the defensive line. Now, don't eat me alive. I know that two of our best players are coming off of the defensive line, Yannick Ngakwe and Calais Campbell, and then you got Avery Jones and Marcel Darius in the middle. But as far as depth goes and guys that are coming in and out, I don't really like the depth that the Jaguars defensive line has. I don't like it at all compared to last season when they just had tremendous guys coming off the bench like Dante Fowler and Avery Jones as well was a guy that was coming off the bench. Uh, there's not a lot of solid depth at the defensive tackle position for the Jaguars this season. Same thing with the defensive end. And this is why the Jags need to think about targeting a defensive player in the first round, even though I'm not a big fan of that. I think if you draft a Sweat or an Ed Oliver in the first round, I could definitely get over it because they're definitely the most talented players, one of some of the most talented players in this year's draft, and having them come off the uh, the bench and to develop them, I think would be huge. You know, it's not going to be like a Taven Bryan where he was a mystery pick at 29 and probably shouldn't have been the pick there, but he is going to go back to his, uh, his roots at the defensive tackle position and coming in for Avery Jones and Marcel Darius, and you know, him and Ed Oliver in the rotation might be a dangerous, dangerous combination. Then you got Montez Sweat, who could come in for either Yan or Calais Campbell, and really give them a good rest. Uh, as of now, Dewane Smoot is kind of the the defensive end that's going to be coming into the rotation, and I don't necessarily like that because you know he hasn't had a lot of playing time. No knock on Dewane Smoot, uh, Dewane Smoot, the player, but you know it hasn't had a lot of experience coming in and playing uh, for the Jaguars. So we're going to see what happens after the draft if the Jags really try to pick up you know a guy in the first round like Sweat, or maybe even like in the later rounds get a guy like Christian Miller, maybe in the fifth. I mean, fourth, sixth round, something like that. Try to snag up an edge rusher that uh, could have a tremendous upside or, you know, try it in the first round. You know, the, we're, we're still confused though what the Jaguars are going to be doing in the first round in this draft because, uh, you know, the best available player is not necessarily the bad thing to do. Uh, it depends if you want to upgrade a whole position and draft maybe like a wide receiver to try and add depth to a to a group that's already pretty solid and I think fits uh, Nick Foles' skill set, but... Uh, as far as the first round goes, I would maybe, I'd probably use it to either address the offensive line or maybe address some depth on the defensive line because, you know, if we get some solid depth on the D line, this ranking that I have them at is going to skyrocket to maybe even number one. So this defensive line is going to need a little bit of depth, but as far as the starting four out there, it's one of the better groups that the Jaguars have. And I'm excited to see with what the Jags do at that position in the draft and, uh, how high this uh, group is going to rank in the post-draft version of this video. Coming in at number three, we have the wide receivers. Now, I know a lot of you are not going to agree with me with how high I have these guys ranked, but hear me out here. I think the wide receivers that the Jags have fit Defo Lupo's scheme, and I think that's part of the reason why he came here, and he fits uh, Nick Foles' talent set as far as wide receivers go. The only thing missing is a true 50-50 guy, which is something I think the Jags could get in the draft. But as far as reliable guys and guys that, you know, can run the intermediate routes and be successful, I think the Jags have a couple of those guys. D.D. Westbrook, Marquise Lee, I think are two guys that are really, really going to shine this year. I think Marquise Lee is going to be one of, uh, Nick Foles' security blankets if this guy comes back 100% healthy and 100% ready to go. I think he's going to make Nick Foles better, and I think Nick Foles is going to make Marquise Lee better. I think with the skill set that he has, he kind of fits the mold of an Alshon Jeffrey uh, for Mr. Nick Foles, a reliable guy across the middle to catch the tough balls, and I think D.D. Westbrook can do that as well. You know, he really emerged in the absence of Marquise Lee to be the new number one wide receiver, and then you got Chris Conley, who Nick Foles already has uh, connections with and is really good friends with him off the field, which I think is an underrated, underrated free agency signing. I think that we're going to go look back on the Chris Conley signing and say, damn, we definitely hit on that one. It definitely helped Nick Foles uh, along the line during the regular season to have a guy he's familiar with and then, you know, kind of bring him along with the D.D. Westbrooks and the Marquise Lees. And then you got guys like uh, DJ Chark and Keelan Cole who, though they are lower on the depth chart, I think have a lot to prove in the 2019 season. And I think they're going to be playing 
really, really hard to uh, not only keep their spot on the roster, but to, you know, get some playing time. Because, uh, you know, like I said, D.D. Westbrook, Marquise Lee, Chris Conley, I think those are going to be the main three. And then you add a draft pick. Uh, to the mix as well, like an A.J. Brown maybe, or a Hakeem Butler in the second round. And then, you know, Chris, and then D.J. Chark and Keelan Cole are kind of foul, fi- finding themselves, excuse me, uh, towards the bottom of the roster. Again, I would not be surprised if the Jaguars cut Keelan Cole to start the season, but if Cole can go back to his 2017 year where he racked up 800 receiving yards, I think this is going to be a very, very dangerous wide receiver room, and I think it's underrated, and I really, really do think it's one of the best groups that the Jags have as a whole. Fight me in the comment section. Coming in at number two, I have the offensive line. Again, fight me if you want. But I think if this starting five comes out healthy, this is going to be one of the best offensive lines of football. Garen, guarantee it. Uh, you got Andrew Norwell and Brandon Linder, and uh, we're, we're still kind of at a question mark at the guard position. You know, you got A.J. Can, who's probably going to fill that. And at the tackle spot, you got Will Richardson and uh, Cam Robinson. And I think those are, Will Richardson's going to be a guy that comes along really, really nicely. The Jaguars didn't want to thrust him into the fire last year. They kind of redshirted him, which is something that I could definitely, definitely respect. And uh, I guess we're really going to see what he can do in the draft. And then I don't put it past the Jags to draft an offensive lineman either. I think that's a gimme, whether that be first, second, third, fourth, sixth round, seventh round. No matter what, the Jags are going to be drafting an offensive tackle. So that's going to be coming in as a depth pick as well. And I think the Jags addressed the depth of the offensive line pretty well, signing uh, TJ Shatley, Ogabaye from the Bengals, uh, Josh Wells as well. You know, just guys that will be solid depth uh, pickups if one of these guys go down. They're not necessarily the best pickup uh, at, on the offensive line, and they're not going to be, you know, playing to the high level that the guy that they are replacing has been playing at. But these are guys that could come in, know the scheme, and play well and protect Nick Foles. Uh, this offensive line last year really, really struggled, but that's a lot due to the injuries. You know, once this group was 100% uh, during the season, you know, you never really saw a problem with it. And then, you know, guys started to go down. Cam Robinson week two, Norwell went down, Linder went down. You know, the whole heart of our offensive line went down in 2018. But, you know, in 2019 with a new quarterback and, you know, guys that are going to want to play hard and earn their position, I think that this is going to be a very very solid offensive line group especially with the depth that they have addressed and again you guys might not agree with me but i definitely think that this is a group that could shine in 2019 and coming in at number one i have the defensive backs ladies and gentlemen if you have two star corners it's hard for that star power to not skyrocket you to the top the Jags right now still currently have Jalen Ramsey and AJ Boye holding it down at the corner spot And then you got Ronnie Harrison, who is super, super exciting, and I cannot wait, cannot wait to see what this kid has to, uh, can show us in a full season. And then you got Jared Wilson, who is a guy you guys are consistently and constantly sleeping on. I understand the fact you don't trust him because you haven't seen a lot of tape on him. You know, he hasn't played a lot, but I think this is a guy that could fill in the shoes very nicely. Him and Ronnie Harrison, I think, will feed off of each other. It's a good young secondary. And then you got guys coming off the bench that were pretty impressive uh, when they had an opportunity to come out there. Quentin Meeks is a guy that automatically comes to mind. I think he'll be the starting nickel corner uh, heading into the uh, 2019 season. And uh, he proved himself. You know, he was out there balling out. Quentin Meeks had a good 2018 season before he unfortunately got injured and uh, couldn't play anymore. Cody Davis as well. He's going to be competing for that safety spot. And I wouldn't put him past the Jags either to bring in somebody in the draft. Whether that, I think that if that happens, it's going to be in the later rounds because they know they have, you know, two all-pro guys holding it down and just knock on wood that they don't get injured because this is going to be the anchor of the defense. You know, the defense is going to feed off the energy of A.J. Boye and Jalen Ramsey. These two need to go back to 2017 form, be locked down corners because just those two star powers alone make this position group the best that the Jaguars have heading into the 2019 season post-free agency. I would have liked to see them bring in a couple of free agent cornerbacks and maybe some safeties, but... You know, if you're going to address that in the draft and try to get some position battles there, I completely, completely understand that. But I'm excited to see Quentin Meeks in the nickel corner role and to really get more playing time and to see what he can do as a player. And I'm also excited to see what Jared Wilson's going to do at the safety position. You know, Ronnie Harrison as well as a full season. 
the Jaguars draft always really solid secondary players. And they have a very, very solid secondary still heading into the 2019 season. Though they lost two veterans at the safety position, I think Ronnie Harrison and Jared Wilson will do a good job holding it down. Though that's that's an unpopular opinion, but I think that they have the potential to do that, and I think they will do that. And they are the best position group heading into the 2019 season post-free agency. And that was me ranking the Jaguars position groups from worst to best post-free agency. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.